Hi, welcome to Health Systems in the US, MBA 600. My name is Professor Sarah Bonzo and I will be your instructor for the course. So since we are not going to be meeting in person this semester, we will be asynchronous. Every week, early in the week, I will be sending you a short video. And the intent of these videos is to help you kind of snap into what's coming up with the content this week and what are my deliverables. So I know many of you are working full time, have family obligations and a lot of other things going on. I would encourage you to watch this video early in the week so you can better plan for what's due. And if for some reason uh, you have, you know, work is getting away from you or something crazy is going on, just, you know, send me an email and we can figure out how to get you on track. The intent is not to push you through the content. The, the intent is to have you have an opportunity to really kind of think through it critically, understand how it applies to yourself and think about what that can look like as you move forward in your career. So you gotta have space and time to do that. Um, so if you need a little bit extra, just let me know. All of you should have had an opportunity now <clears throat> to log, <clears throat> excuse me, to log into Blackboard. Uh, we are using Blackboard Ultra um, slowly but surely. All of our courses in the School of Business and across the university are gonna be transitioning from Learn uh, to Ultra. It's basically just an, a new improved version of Blackboard. Um, but everything's available to you. If you have any questions as you're looking through it, please let me know. Please make sure you download the syllabus and check it out. All of the deliverables, due dates, and content is going to be listed out there, and we, will, we won't be deviating from that um, very much, if, if at all. So um, please make sure to familiarize yourself with the syllabus um, and everything in Blackboard Ultra. In terms of the course as a whole, this is a survey course. So we're going to be covering a lot of content. That means that we're not gonna do deep dives. Um, the intent is really to get you to understand how the system operates as a whole, or at least how it's intended to work. Um, but really my, my goal for you is to not spend a lot of time in the theory, but to spend more time in practice. So we'll talk about these theoretical concepts, kind of how things have evolved, where we are now. And then in the discussion boards, that is going to be my opportunity um, to have you kind of think about how that applies to the work that you're doing and the, the communities that you serve. Each week, there will also be what I call a mastery quiz available in Blackboard. Um, those are due each week as well. And the intent there is not to, to quiz you and make sure you got everything right. The, the intent there is for you. It's a check of your understanding. You can take those quizzes as often as you want, as many times as you want until you get 100. Um, there is a pool of questions, so you'll see new questions come through as you retake the, the mastery quiz as well. But again, the intent here is for you to learn. So this is really, if, there, if you got a couple questions wrong, that's, that's fine. That that's, gives you insight as to where you need to go back and focus a little bit more. So it's a good thing. Um, in terms of the overall course structure, again, I guess, so we've got each week the discussion boards, we've got the mastery quizzes that are due. Um, and that they're not, they're both not going to be due every week, but you can see how, how they're kind of structured in the syllabus. The first half of the semester is definitely more kind of a, a traditional uh, graduate level course where there's some theory, you're going to be reading the chapters and, and, and doing the discussion posts. As we move into the second half of the semester, that's where I'm going to be asking you to, um, to really start investigating the work that you do, your um, your system, your processes to identify areas for improvement um, and to get out of your comfort zone and start seeing things from other people's perspective as well. So I won't talk a, a whole lot about that now, but again, I would like to see you take the content that we're talking about each week and readily start thinking about how it applies to the work that you're doing. And sometimes it's really high and theoretical and it's hard to do that, but I'm going to do my best to try to encourage you um, mostly through the discussion boards into thinking about how, how and where it applies to the work that you're doing. So let's move into what to expect this week. So each week in uh, Blackboard, we'll, be, um, we'll have a new module. And at the very beginning of that module, you'll see that I have learning objectives listed there. Um, usually we don't spend a lot of time on learning objectives, but I think they're really important because it's basically saying, hey, this is what's really important for you to do. I did not take these from a textbook. I came up with these myself um, as I was developing the course to say, okay, what am I actually, what do I want them to walk away with each week? So if you're ever, you know, I'm going to include this in my, in my weekly videos, but if you're ever like, hey, what is it that's truly important? Go back to those learning objectives and make sure you feel fairly comfortable with them. So we'll be talking this week about the forces um, acting on the US healthcare system. We're in something called a quasi free market system, where as many of you know, um, the, the items that we are purchasing, 
we do not necessarily know how much they cost and we don't know about a whole lot about the quality. Um, we're, we're basically buying into a black box in hopes that something is going to make us feel better. Um, and unfortunately it's evolved to be that kind of system, but we're, we're trying to, as you'll, you'll learn more about throughout the course of the semester, there are some policy changes that are trying to get us out of there. Um, but again, it, I think when we think about changing and improving the health system as a whole, there are policy levers that have to be moved, um, but there are also, there's a lot of work that still has to be done at the local level as well. So I'd like for you to um, become comfortable with knowledge of key events and milestones um, in health and medical history. You'll see that um, even though this week is gonna be a little bit heavier in terms of the reading content, it is definitely heavy. So if you are not thoroughly reading chapters one, two, and three, don't, don't beat yourself up. Try to skim through it, get as much as you can, get a gist of the material. You'll see when you go through and do the mastery quiz that there are areas that maybe you need to, to go back and reread. But really, I want you to understand how this, how this kind of thing has evolved into the beast that it is. Um, it's messy. You know, it, um, when we first started looking at offering insurance coverage as an employee benefit, that, that really changed the game. But even before that, in 1910, there was something called the Flexner Report, which I linked to in Blackboard. Um, and I would encourage you to check that out because that had a really, really, um, that was a major factor in how not just medical education, but how the profession of medicine has evolved over time. So I want you to familiarize yourself with just the key events and understanding how the system has evolved. But then in addition to that, this is kind of a big week. I want you to really start to think about what is health. So the World Health Organization defines health as the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And this is important. It is not merely the absence of disease. So for, for a long time, um, we have always approached healthcare as being kind of reactive, right? We, somebody gets sick and they, they go to a, a physician to, to get treatment, but increasingly we want to look at how can we be proactive with both physical and mental health? Um, how can we create societies that flourish? Um, there's a lot of great work being done in this space, but there is a huge opportunity to take what we are actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis and really rethink what is it that we want to do? We want to create healthier communities. Um, and we're going to be talking a lot about population health towards the end of the semester. As we're thinking about what health really means and how that aligns with the system that's designed to give it, um, we'll see that there's some gaps, right? But we know that. Um, but as we start to understand health and where we stand, we need to be able to measure it. So this week we'll be talking about how do we actually measure health status and what are some of those, what we call predisposing and enabling factors um, that, that all go into somebody's health. Um, so make sure that in addition to um, looking through the chapters that you're also kind of going through Blackboard because I'm gonna weave together some content with what is listed in the textbook as well. So what's due? Um, all of your due dates for this course are going to be on a Monday evening. So all of this stuff for week one is actually due next Monday, August 30th. And the reason for that is I found that, especially with working professionals, um, a lot of times people start stuff during the week, but you know, hold off on doing a lot of work on the weekend. Um, but you know what? We have personal lives and family and sometimes work on the weekend as well. And sometimes it doesn't get done. You have the best laid plans for what you're gonna do on the weekend and it doesn't happen. So a Monday night due date, due date gives you Monday um, to kind of wrap up whatever you weren't able to accomplish over the weekend. So next Monday, I would like for you to post an introduction. I know so many of you are, have already done that. Thank you for that. And also please upload your profile picture. When you go into Blackboard Ultra, you'll see on the homepage, a little profile uh, person, click on that. You can upload your, um, your profile picture. It's really important because especially in the discussion boards, which are so rich in this course, it creates a very different sense of community. When you see somebody's picture there, it, it creates a more personal connection immediately as opposed to us all kind of being blinded um, behind, our, behind our computer screen. So please do that if you wouldn't mind. Um, and then you'll also have your first mastery quiz on chapters one through three and your first discussion post. And this again is gonna take the content of how are we, what is health, how are we measuring it? And we're going to go to something called the New York State Community Health Indicator Report. And I want you to all choose your county where you currently reside. And I want you to look through those health indicators. And I want you to find one that is surprising. It can be either positive or negative, but it should just surprise you. And then I want you to think critically about what are those predisposing and enabling factors that play into that uh, health status indicator. 
So usually this is a this is a fun way for people to really start thinking about okay what are their what other resources exist in my community and as I start to prepare myself to become an administrator how do I start looking out of the scope of what I just do on a day to day basis and look at what's happening in the community and the goal then is to 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 align those right the work that we're doing on a day to day basis with the, the changes that we want to see at a community level so again you've got three chapters here this week. Um, there are, I have noted in the syllabus, there is a discount if you buy your, your textbook through ACHE. Um, if you are not currently a member, I would strongly suggest that you become one. I'm actually going to forward on an email that I just got today about a discount um, for being a part of that professional organization. If you have any questions as you get started, please do not hesitate to reach out and I look forward to meeting you all.